Major presents. <sighs> we gotta get out of here before they see us. Hernandez! Hello everyone, this is your teacher Brock Chanel, and I am glad I get to teach you in another Learn English with Movies video. We are now approximately 150 people in this channel. How cool is that? And we're all from different countries. Before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you'll never miss another opportunity to improve your English. Are you ready? Let's go! This girl's name is Gabby. Gabby Hernandez. She's one of the main characters in the movie. And this girl is Becky. Notice Becky addresses Gabby as Hernandez. This is pretty common in the United States. Your last name is your family name. And because you're a family member of your family, you're also your last name. To give an example, let's say your name is John Smith. You're a Smith, but your dad is a Smith too. That's why you have a first name that separates you from your other family members that have the same family name. You are Smith, but you're John Smith. And she's a Hernandez, but she's Gabby Hernandez. Oh, hello, blonde one. Other girls. Gabby, where's your uniform? Yes, we have rules, Hernandez. <clears throat> Only a sand dollar in full uniform may participate in a cookie sale. Did you notice that these three girls are wearing a special kind of uniform? It's because they're Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts of the USA, also known as Girl Scouts, is a youth organization for girls in the United States and American girls living abroad. It was founded in 1912. Can you believe it? And it has over 1.8 million members across the United States. It's an organization that prepares girls to empower themselves and promotes values such as compassion, courage, and confidence. The sand dollar Becky talks about here is their Girl Scout group. If you're a sand dollar, it means you're a member of that group. In the United States, Girl Scouts are a huge thing. These girls generally sell cookies to raise funds to support themselves financially. What? The cookie sales today? I totally thought that was yesterday. But you didn't show up yesterday either, did you? That's a good point. I was busy rescuing this animal. This cute animal is Vivo, the animal that gave the movie its name. He is the titular animal. The word titular comes from the word title. If you put it in front of a noun, it means that noun is mentioned in the title. Cool, no? What are you doing? Oh, he's so cute! Oh, he's so cute! Oh, he's so cute! Him? No! Go to town. He loves it. Look at that face. Oh, uh, he's adorable. Hey, stop. This is borderline abuse. Oh, so ears. fuzzy. What's his name? So ears. fuzzy. What's his name? His name's Vivo, and he's a possum. Gabby, that's not a possum. That's a kinkajou. Here's a picture of a possum. Wait, actually, we might have a better picture. Okay, this is better. Possums are marsupials. Marsupials are animals that generally have pouches and they carry their babies in their pouches. Here's a quick question for you. If marsupials are animals that have pouches to carry their babies, which of these animals is a marsupial? Correct! Kangaroos are one of the most popular animals that are marsupials. And this gentleman right here is King Kachu. They're totally different from possums. Like possums, though, 
they're nocturnal animals. Nocturnal means they generally come out at night. King cachous love sweets, and they have long tails, like Vivo's tail here. A very rare South American tropical rainforest mammal, aka the honey bear. The honey bear. Never heard it, but I'll take it. Gotta get out of here before they see us. The word gotta is actually two words put together. The longer form of the word is got to. Do you want to know the even longer form of the word gotta? It is have got to. In English, if we want to say something is required or necessary, we use have got to. For example, if you have work to do, and your friend invites you out, you can say, "I can't today. I have got to work." You can shorten this sentence to, "I've got to work." What is more interesting is that you can even get rid of the verb "have," so the sentence becomes, "I gotta work." Then you can combine the two words "got" and "to" and say, "I gotta work." All of the sentences that you see right now have actually the same meaning. They're different versions of one another. We gotta get out of here before they see us. Hernandez. Oh, hello, blonde one. We talked about one usage of the word "one" in our Learn English with Taylor Swift video. If you want to watch it, click here and watch that lesson after this. It is one of our best video lessons, and I'm sure you'll love it. Anyways, in English we have adjectives that describe people or things. Blonde is one such adjective. We call women with this hair color blonde. We call men with this hair color blonde too. What is strange is we spell the word blonde differently. Blonde, if we're talking about men, blonde. If you're talking about women, now that we got this out of the way, we can talk about what the word "one" does to an adjective. In simplest terms, it transforms an adjective into a noun. For example, the word "little" means small in English. You can hear someone calling a child "little one." For example, a person can ask, "How's her little one doing?" instead of How's her child doing? We can't say how's her little doing. Why do you think this sentence is ungrammatical? Yep, because it's not a noun. In the scene we just watched, Gabby calls Becky blonde one because she's blonde. And Gabby wants to address her differently. Remember, it's not polite to address someone like this, and Gabby addresses her as blonde one because she probably doesn't like her. My question to you is, how would you describe this person? Right on. Oh hello. Blonde one, other girls. Gabby, where's your uniform? Only a sand dollar in full uniform may participate in a cookie sale. What? The cookie sales today? A sale is when something or some service is being sold. These two words are actually coming from the same root. To sell, and sale. Basically, if something is being sold, then it's a sale. Quick question for you: If you want to sell something, how would you let people know that you want to sell that thing? That's right. If you want to sell something, you can put a for sale sign right next to it. In the United States, you can see for sale signs when people want to sell their houses, for example. 
like in this picture. You can also see garage sales in the United States. A garage sale is when people decide to sell their household goods, such as furniture, in their garage or front yard. A cookie sale, then, is when people sell cookies. Simple as that. The cookie sales today? I totally thought that was yesterday. But you didn't show up yesterday either, did you? This is what we call a phrasal verb in English. You might know the meaning of show, and you might know the meaning of up. But show up means something entirely different. When Becky says, But you didn't show up yesterday either, did you? She means Gabby didn't go to the cookie sale yesterday. To show up means to arrive or to go to an event. Example, my birthday is at 6 p.m. Please don't show up late. Another example, just as we were leaving, he showed up. But you didn't show up yesterday either, did you? That's a good point. If you're talking to a friend and they say something you agree with, you can say, that's a good point. Saying good point is almost like saying, you're right, or I like what you're saying. If somebody makes a good point, then they are saying something that is logical and something that you agree with. That's right, we use the verb make with good point. Additionally, you can also raise a good point. Raise and make are two verbs we use with the phrase good point. Example, when Sarah said it was wrong to have a wild animal as a pet, I thought she raised a really good point. Think of your own example and share it with everyone in the comments. That's a good point. I was busy rescuing this animal. <laughs> Aww. What are you doing? Oh, he's so cute. Can I pet him? <laughs> The word pet, as a noun, is an animal that lives with you. Here are some animals people commonly have as pets. Cats, dogs, fish, and rabbits. Speaking of fish, do you know the plural of a fish? I know, right? English is kind of weird. The plural of fish is also fish. One fish or two fish, it's the same. Back to the word pet. When one of the scout girls asks, Can I pet him? They use the word pet as a verb. That's right. This word is both a noun and a verb. And as a verb, it means to touch an animal in a friendly or a loving way. Example, my cat doesn't really like to be petted, so I wouldn't pet him if I were you. Can I pet him? No! Go to town! He loves it! One of the reasons I love languages is because sometimes we say things, but those things do not mean what we think they mean. Going to town is one example of that. Sure, you can hop into your car and go to a town, I mean physically. But going to town means to do something energetically without holding yourself back. When one of the girls asks, Can I pet him? Gabby answers, go, go to town. This means Gabby wants them to go wild and not to hold themselves back from petting him. So, going to town means doing something in a very enthusiastic way. Example, she really went to town on her first performance. It was amazing. Go to town. He loves it. Look at that face. Oh, this is hey, stop. This is borderline abuse. Abuse is when someone hurts another person or animal emotionally or physically. Unfortunately, there are some cruel people who make animals do terrible things or they outright hurt them. This is called animal abuse. Example, I think the whole circus thing is animal abuse. Let's look at the word borderline. A border is what separates two things. When something is close to the borderline, it means it's a big thing because it is approaching the borderline. In other words, 
it is extreme. This is borderline abuse. His name's Vivo, and he's a possum. Gabby, that's not a possum. That's a kinkajou, a very rare South American tropical rainforest mammal, aka the honey bear. Did you know the word aka is actually an initialism? Initialisms are abbreviations consisting of the initial letters of a word group, and we pronounce these letters separately. AKA stands for also known as. Example, this is a telephone, also known as a cell phone. AKA is an informal word. You might have heard this initialism in songs and musical performances. So, when you hear AKA, you'll know that another name is coming. Want to practice? Fill in the blank. Yep, Michael Jackson was also known as the King of Pop. Good job! That's a kinkajou, a very rare South American tropical rainforest mammal, aka the honey bear. The honey bear, never heard it, but I'll take it. If you're satisfied with something, you can say, okay, I'll take it. Example, the room is kind of small, but I'll take it. This sentence basically means you aren't precisely happy about something that was offered to you, but you'll accept it because it's not so bad. When Becky calls Vivo a honey bear, he says, Never heard it, but I'll take it. This means he thinks that this name is not bad at all. Yes, we have rules, Hernandez. <clears throat> Only a sand dollar in full uniform may participate in a cookie sale. What? The cookie sale's today? I totally thought that was yesterday. But you didn't show up yesterday either, did you? Good point. I was busy rescuing this animal. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, he's so cute. Can I pet him? No. Go to town. He loves it. That's not a possum. That's a kinkajou, a very rare South American tropical rainforest mammal, aka the honey bear. The honey bear, never heard it, but I'll take it. Amazing job as always. I see that you tried your best and that's what's important. It was my pleasure teaching you in this video lesson. Now, go watch the next one. I'll see you in my next video.